with me. Good afternoon, everyone. 
Welcome to another episode of the InFocus series of Holy Name University. InFocus is a series of panel discussions or virtual uh, conversations about programs and the course offerings of Holy Name University. Brought to you live from the Marketing and Advertising Office of Holy Name University. This afternoon, we bring you in focus uh, of the College of Education, specifically uh, the three programs of BS, BSNED, uh, TLED. And we have with us this afternoon no other than the Dean of the College of Education, Dr. Roque Bonca, and Dr. Jocelyn Diniega, the program heads of this three programs. So without further ado, may I give you the Dean, uh, Dr. Roque Bonca, to uh, welcome us in this afternoon's In Focus. Uh, so Roque? Good afternoon, everyone. We gladly welcome you to this discussion. It puts in focus the programs of the College of Education, as what Mabera said, particularly the Bachelor of Elementary Education, Bachelor of Special Needs Education, and Bachelor of Technology and Livelihood Education. We hope that this discussion will shed light on what we offer and why we invite students to join us. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Sir Roque. Uh, and for allowing the uh, in focus uh, to be the, uh, the, the College of Education to be this afternoon's focus. Uh, in the most welcome program so uh, we are uh, we are airing this uh, program in our YouTube channel the HNU YouTube channel our official Facebook page and of course airing the audio files in uh, in our very own DYJR the Johnson radio and uh, 106.5 FM in the Metro Tagbilaran area so uh, good afternoon to everyone. So we have with us also, welcome to um, In Focus, Dr. Jocelyn Deniega. Hi, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mabir. Good afternoon, Sir Dean. Good afternoon to the HNU administration, my colleagues in the teaching profession, Holy Namians, and to all of our viewers. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, uh, it is very, uh, very, um, oh, it's a welcome uh, invitation or uh, uh, it's, we're very happy that you are very gracious to accept this invitation uh, of In Focus, being that you're a new appointee in the College of Education. Right, Sir Roque? Yes, ma'am. New appointed chairperson. Yeah, so uh, before before uh, the appointment, there was just you and uh, another Miss Jer uh, yes. in the College of Education. And now, uh, so there has been a what a division of labor or a split or what? what uh, how does that work? Uh, it was the father president who thought of the idea to give more attention, focus, and uh, emphasis on the programs under Ms. Diniega or Dr. So, Diniega. So, Ma'am uh, Ma Jair is taking care of uh, the high school, BS Ed, and the uh, physical education programs. And the different uh, programs under BS Ed. And Ma'am Jair. Yes, Jordan. because BS Ed, BS Ned, and BT Okay. Yes. So, thank you very much for. Uh, uh, taking the time to really explain all these programs to our uh, audience, our viewers, our followers, our likers, our uh, future enrollees, stakeholders, and parents, and even the Holy Name uh, family. So without further ado, Mom Joy, you're in the hot seat. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> right, thank, thank you for having me here. Let's deep dive into conversations about the three programs that you're in or that you're heading. But before that, tell us about you, what you can share 
your personal life, your education, your career. Yes, the virtual floor is yours, Ma'am Joy. Thank you, Ma'am Veer. Um, I have to start my name. I am Jocelyn Polgo Diniega, single. Colleagues and friends and even students call me Miss Joyce. I am a Cebuana from Walbual, southern part of Cebu. Best known for its white sand beaches, recreational diving, and colorful underwater world. But now I'm living here in Tagbilaran with my sister's family. I graduated from elementary and high school education in Walbual. A month after graduation from high school, I went here in Bohol with my sister. My sister was already employed in one of the private school up to the present. She encouraged me to take up education course. So I took an entrance examination in CVSCAF now by Sue. Unfortunately, I passed the entrance exam. I took up B.S. Ed major in TLE. I graduated in 2004. In 2005, I passed the teacher's licensure examination. Then my dream is to go out of the country. So after I, re I received the, um, the news that I passed that teacher's licensure examination, I went to Thailand. I taught in Bangkok for two years. Teaching Thai students was excellent and rich experience. And I learned also their culture as well. Yet, I missed my family. So I went back home. I feel urged to study. So I enrolled Masters of Arts in Teaching Vocational Education or MathVe in civil staff. At the same time, I am teaching children in the center. I took only 18 units and it came to my mind, I wanted to study another specialization. Then I decided to enroll diploma in special education at Cebu Technological University. I saw personal investment in attention to the individual and it's a crucial special education classroom. So it creates a life bonds between the student and the teacher, which find is meaningful and rewarding. So um, I pursued my master's degree in special education and graduated 2012. I stopped from schooling. In 2017, I feel the urge to go back to school. Then I took Doctor of Development Education, major in special education, and defended my dissertation last January 2021. Regarding my employment, I am teaching different grade levels of students, handling learners with special needs in the center that prepared and equipped knowledge on how to handle students. But I have and desire to teach college students. In 2015, my friend told me that HNU College of Education was looking for a teacher who has a master's degree in special education. Without hesitation, I wrote my application letter and resume and have submitted them to the office. The day after, I was called an interview. I was sorry, I was called for an interview and demo teaching. I could remember the panel in front of me, like Dr. Bonka, um, um, Sir Bobo. There were many on the table. Fortunately, I was hired as teacher in technology and livelihood education, in special education, and I'm also teaching professional sub subjects in, in the grad graduate school. Now, I'm heading BE Ed, Bachelor Elementary Education, Bachelor in Special Needs Education, and Bachelor in 
uh, technology and livelihood education program. I think that would be all for my education <laughs> career, Mom Vera. Thank you very much for um, telling us about you. What a what a journey, right, sir? Yes, and she needs longer time to introduce herself because this is her first time to be with the College of Education as chair, chairperson. Yes, yes. So thank you. And we, we are really, the intent is really to uh, introduce her to the bigger community yes. and uh, to um, uh, let them know uh, not only about her, but about the programs that uh, she is currently heading and you know like uh, what the students are in for and what are the job opportunities after but I'm very happy uh, to know uh, what a journey you had so far mom joy uh, teaching in Bangkok and uh, coming to Bohol back to Bohol yes. sounds like my uh, life turn off yes <laughs> you've been to the other side of the world Yes, only that she's single. Sure. Right? <laughs> single like you, sir, okay. We don't have regrets. <laughs> we <Yeah>. enjoy. <laughs> we enjoy the life of being single. We, we, yeah. we, can we just make an excuse uh, of our profession as our focus yeah. of, for being single up to this time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happily single. We love our work. <laughs> I'm happily single. Uh, as of now also sir <laughs> um so do we go to um uh, your choice mom joy is there okay about which program to uh discuss first we can do um uh, elementary education or the special needs education or the uh tech how do you call it now uh technology level education yes yeah. So your choice, Mom Joy. Okay, so we have to uh, take first, particularly on the ED, Bachelor Elementary Education. Okay, yes, please go ahead. Okay, the ED program is a four-year teacher education program designed to prepare individuals intending to teach in the elementary level. So it aims to develop highly motivated and competent teachers specializing in the content and pedagogy for elementary education. So occupations or career after the completion of this program, teacher, they will become teachers in elementary in both public and in private school. They can put their own learning center or schools. Or they can become editor of papers and they can teach outside the country. Then there were many graduates already who have been teaching outside the Philippines. Or um, they're having, um, they become tutors or um, international people. Okay. So um, these are the um, professions that they can take after um, graduation. So for, for uh, the BE Ed, Sir Roque and Mom Joy, uh, elementary education, uh, these, uh, these teachers or the, these student teachers are taught uh, to teach all the subjects. Yes. Uh, before there yes, were specializations, but now uh, BE Ed graduates are generalists. Right. They so are supposed to teach all the subjects. Right. So this 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 uh, four year program will train uh, the student teachers and the teachers to uh, teach from grade one to six, or is it from kindergarten uh, to six, and then um, and the pedagogy of uh, uh, education. Supposedly there is a. Another program for those who intend to teach the preschool. Okay. We call it early child education, but okay. in the moment we freeze that one in our program is because there were only a few enrollees. Okay. Okay. So grades one to six, and they go through uh, all the subjects of uh, 
English, science, math, mape, and all of that. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Okay. So the the curriculum for the BE Ed that composed of the new uh, general education courses, right? Uh, professional education courses. We have the specialization teaching math, elementary math, teaching elementary English. Okay. And we have also these elective courses, special topics, and it is mandated by um, Chad. Okay. And then they, uh, they have four years, and then they have uh, thesis, and they also have uh, uh, what you call that student teaching. Yes, yes because they cannot graduate without student teaching, and they cannot also graduate without bound, bound thesis. Right. The, the thesis is enrolled at what year? Usually in the last Very semester. Year. Last third year. Now we the new, the third new year, curriculum, second semester. Third year. And then the third third year, second semester. And the student teaching is in what uh, uh, in the whole fourth year? Um student teaching in the fourth year, second semester. Okay. So sounds like a, a plan. Uh, they have to uh, so they finish their thesis first before they uh, go on to the teaching that's required. Yes, they cannot enroll the student teaching, um, student, student teaching, they cannot um, defend okay. their thesis. Okay, so sir, uh, just so, uh, because we've been talking in the different in focus about the uh, senior high school track, are, do we um, uh, have a special, uh, you know, like do we do, do they really have to be enrolled in either um, in uh, Humes or in GAS or or do we accept any senior high school uh, strand or track for uh, DEM? Preferably, they are supposed to enroll in Humes, but uh, we are pleased to inform everybody that whatever tracks you come from. You can enroll in the college of education. There are no bridging programs. You can enroll right away and take the courses that we offer. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, are there any like uh, what qualities or what should be um, you know? Uh, are there any important qualifications or passion uh, that um, someone has to um, take into consideration when they do desire to? Um, go into elementary uh, education, teaching. You were able to raise children, Mabira. You know, it's not easy to raise children. I know, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. The saying, if it goes, it takes a village to train a child. Yeah. And so if I am to cite one characteristic of a would-be BEA teacher, he should have passion for nurturing children. And we encourage those with higher grade, uh, not, not actually highest grade, but good grades in high school because we cannot give children what we don't have. So at least you have a working knowledge on the profession that you're in. Yes, I know. Uh, Mom Joy, uh, do we have, uh, if you can give us an idea of uh, right now, currently, uh, how many are in... Um, enrolled in the end, like first year, second year, third year, fourth year, how many are uh, due for uh, practice or student teaching? Um, I, ha I have to check it first because yes, I yes, did not sorry. get the, the data. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry, but uh, are we increasing is what I... Uh, uh, what I'm uh, checking, are we increasing in numbers or, you know, like, do we have about the same numbers that are getting into BEN? Over time? Um, we have, we have a number of enrollees. Yes. Okay. Um, it's, it's not like in the other program that we have a low number of enrollees, but for BEN, um, there were many who enrolled. And also, sir, I think you know, uh, based on, uh, you know, like looking at the community, when the parents are teachers, a lot of times some of the, their children also become teachers. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, but I'd like to emphasize this one because before 
the BA curriculum has the most number had the most number of enrollees, but now it is not as big as it has it had been before, because the the market or the employment opportunities has shifted from elementary to high school because of the offering of the additional two years in high school. Oh, okay. So that's why we have the big number of takers that we have now is in the Bachelor of Secondary Education. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but, uh, but uh, there's still uh, an important, uh, you know, need of uh, elementary teachers, I think. And, um, and uh, particularly on the first, three years, the formative years, grade one, grade two, grade three. They're supposed to put the best teachers in the yes, early years of yes. school day. That is what yes, I was going because that is, their, that is on their foundation stage. The formative years, yes. So, um, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's, we we're very lucky that the teacher's board uh, is already, you know, in our very own province, in our very own even school. in Bohol, just two weeks ago. In Holy Name University. In Holy Name University, we are proud of that. Yes. So it, it, that, that's very uh, that's a welcome development, and I hope that uh, many will pursue uh, this uh, program, this course, because of uh, you know it's already here, and you know it's it's in HNU. We're offering it in HNU, and so on. So I hope that's that true, Mavira. In fact, I'm so proud that our educational system in the elementary in Bohol are peopled by teachers who come from Holy Name University. And we made an initial survey on the administrators. A good number of them also. have become administrators, also principals, uh, coordinators, supervisors, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Yes. So we have a good number of graduates who have been pillars of the educational system in our Yes, even the even the uh, principals, elementary and high school are our graduate school and doctoral program uh, graduates also, sir, right? Or enrolled? That's correct. Yeah. I I because uh now the the ones in the graduate school are getting younger and younger because of their. Yeah. Uh, of their uh, also for their uh, you know the ladder the path or the you know like the ranking system probably you know that Mavira because you're a teacher in the graduate school so. yes and also I have worked with many of these schools in uh, education reforms and uh, in the different programs of uh, uh, you know like uh, different organizations that I have worked with in different. Uh, done all over Bohol also for HNU for, right. <laughs> for inviting uh, uh, students to HNU. Mom Joy, uh, what about yes, the mom. other program? So what do we do next? What do you want to talk about next? Your choice. Yes, uh, I, I will have to answer the question a while ago that <laughs> how many are in Raleigh? Yes, how many yes, are in Raleigh? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that will help the public also. That for the B Ed who enrolled in the first year, we have 32. And then um, for the second year, we have 14, third year, 19. And the total now, we have 87 enrollees for the B Ed program. So we have more um, teachers coming soon. Yes, yeah. coming soon. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a uh, that's a uh, a good number that we will soon be, uh, you know, like uh, go 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 forth and multiply, <laughs> and you know, like to uh, educate. As Sir Roque said, um, what did you say, sir? It takes a village. It takes a village to train a child. Train a child to raise a child. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, and you were saying uh, we have a tracer study, sir, of our graduates, where they are now. Uh, tracer study, but that's not exhaustive. Okay. Uh, we have listed more than 300 who become pillars and uh, principals, coordinators, and supervisors in the 
public school system as well as in the private school system. Yes, I go around and I um, I see many of our former students, our graduates, not only as uh, classroom teachers, but also as uh, uh, school heads and principals. But something teachers. nice, Ma'am Vera, also is that when we go around the hall, they are not ashamed to admit that they, are, they were one student of Holiday University. They are proud that they are alumni of the school. Yes. And that, that, that makes our job, my job especially, easier when I go around because, you know, like they really welcome. Yes. And you will never go hungry because they always offer you food to eat. Yes. Diba, Ma'am Joy? You were also the hungry assigned. Now. <laughs> you were also assigned in many schools. I miss yes, when I was assigned I in, um, was in it going to the school, the experience is um, taking food, um, snacks, plus napatry padala daghan, no protas. I'm happy to uh, what where is the place? The one we dropped by with Marang. Shirabuliones Tech Bomb High School, <laughs> Sir oh. Jeff Ford. <laughs> And yes, uh, we're very welcome there. And uh, the other schools sir. Sacks of sacks of marang, huh? Not just only pieces, but sacks of marang. Yes, sacks <laughs> of marang. Yeah. Okay, sacks of marang. By the time that we're together with Mamvera, ora to gi gihogra sa isakay sa So so I I really in the guardhouse sa marang gi. You pick up. I really miss the, you know, like the interaction with students, sir, in the different schools. But, um, yeah. you know, it's it's good to go around and then also have this kind of, you know, virtual uh, panel uh, discussion with them. Hopefully, okay. we will revert to face to face. Yes, soon. So, sir, I I have a question. I'm curious. Uh, and, Mom Joy. What is the plan for the student teaching? Are they also like um, in the virtual, in the online, or the are they um, observing classes or you know through the online classes or how does that work? So, supposedly, um, we got invitations from the public schools to tap our student teachers for the Brigada Escuela, training students who are non-readers in the public schools hmm. to be their teachers. But we cannot fill them up as of this time because there is no face-to-face -face instruction. At the same time, the school, our school, does not allow the students to come personally to HNU. So our plan for student teaching is that they will just only be assisting the teachers in the in the uh, our own elementary ah, department okay. through Google instruction. Mm -hmm. So they will not come personally. If there is no face-to-face -face instruction yet, yes, they can be added as <laughs> they can be added, Mom Joy, as uh, co-teachers in the Google yes. classroom. Yes, in the Google classroom, so yes. they will be invited by the teacher, and they will come as co-teacher so that they can um, participate as well in making the. Um, um, instructional materials right. or they can help with the teacher. Yes. That's not something new, Mabira, because allowed. we have tried that one in the previous semesters with a handful of graduates that we have had. Yes, we are in the, the digital age, so we have to be flexible. We can do yes. both, you know, online and offline, face-to-face, -face, and um, I think that's the way to go um, moving forward. But yes, I would be happy if they can deploy also. Days. They can they, they can be deployed in the public schools because there is another modality that is modular instruction. Right. Not to see have the experience to distribute, to retrieve modules in the public schools. Yes. Uh, um, I want to add, Mamvir, um, for our FS um class, since they cannot come and observe in the physically in the school. So what we ask there is um, they're going to visit uh, the nearest school in their locality and they have to observe how the 
um, distribution of the Moodles and the retrieval of the Moodles by the teacher. Um, that's one way that they can have their field study in observa um, teaching observation. Yes, and all the preparations that, uh, the, that are done prior to um, the distribution and then the retrieval and then the checking including observation of the learning environment at the public schools, particularly the elementary schools, Mapira, because their environment in Holiday University is different from the public schools in the yes. municipalities and countryside. At least they will have a feel how it is to be the teacher in these places. I, uh, I am blessed to have been able to observe uh, before the pandemic and for several years uh, how yes. uh, the public schools, the basic education were able to, um, you know, like uh, do different things, uh, was involved in parent effectiveness seminars, uh, the Busog Busog Talino school feeding program because of all of our students, many of our elementary students are go to school, go to school hungry. With, with empty stomach. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so mom, uh, next up. Uh, what program next? Okay, so next in line is the Bachelor of Education, major in generalist. So we are offering in HMU the um, BSNED generalist. Because when we talk of um, but, um, BSNED, um, it comes with four other majors. Early childhood education, teaching learners with visual impairment, teaching deaf and hard of hearing learners and teaching elementary school teaching. But in our, in our HNU, we are offering BSNED generalists. Okay. So this is a four-year course program which specializes in special needs education. So the, it prepares the teacher to instruct and manage students with additional needs in inclusive and segregated educational settings. And it equips teachers to basic education and alternate depending on the needs of the students. Those who will teach in the elementary level will be trained across different subject areas, that is in inclusion. So those who will teach in the secondary level will provide educational support to students with additional needs in inclusive classrooms or provide educational services to students who may be enrolled in special education centers. Because there are some students with additional needs who are enrolling in self-contained class and others are mainstream in the inclusive education. So the graduate of this de uh, degree program should be able to teach in the regular and special education schools as teachers, provided that she passes the teacher's licensure examination. So the graduates of this um, BSNED program can teach from elementary to college. As long as... Um, uh, they can accomplish the academic requirements of BSNED. Um, so they will be able to practice the teaching profession in the field of special needs. So special needs, um, the graduates of generalist may be employed in special education centers, clinics, as special education teachers. They could be a therapist or a clinicians. They can also work in regular schools that practice inclusion in learning support staff and in special education teachers. And we are happy also that at Holy Name uh, University, we have ISPED. So um, this serves as our laboratory school for our program. Okay, so really have a, um, this time really have a good um, venue because they were transferred to the elementary 
uh, elementary department, I guess, with, they have their new building there. Okay, so that serves our um, lab school for our um, students who took up this net. And, and so uh, this, uh, this is the same as the BEA that they uh, have also, um, uh, what you call this, the thesis and then the practice teaching and then uh, preparations for the board and the board exam. Same process. Exactly, ma'am. Yes. Okay. But uh, they're prepared uh, for elementary, uh, high school and college uh, teaching. Yes, ma'am. Wow, thank you very much. Uh, Sir Roque, because uh, uh, when I left in 2001, there was no BSNED yet. When did we uh, start with the BSNED program of uh, Holy Name University? Do you remember how we started? If I'm when? not mistaken, that was during the time of Satorinas, particularly in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. When we started the university, Yes. Status. Yes. Uh, because uh, when I left in when I left to teach abroad, um, there were three that were really hired. Uh, top three. Uh, you know, the exodus of teachers was four. It's uh, math, science, and special education. Special. Yes, and we so, have a good number of graduates in the business program that work abroad or overseas. Yes, and there, there, I did not uh, know that was uh, really needed until I saw, and I was, and I had some students that really had special needs teaching in, uh, in an alternative school where uh, the learners were from different, you know, have different uh, problems or issues. They're, they're like, uh, some have, uh, some have autism, some have uh, bipolar disorder, well, some have a uh, behavior problems. So it was hard uh, to teach without special training. So precisely. Yes, exactly, ma'am. That's right. Um, really have to take care of them like a crystal ball. I'm happy that, uh, very yes, I'm happy that HNU was very receptive, very, um, you know, like um, quick to um, offer the program. Because we just don't offer the program for the sake of graduating degrees, right. but for the sake of our commitment to the Bolano community that we will be able to assist the learning of the students with special needs. Yes. That's our commitment. To be inclusive and also to be, you know, like uh, uh, demand uh, driven. Also. Yeah. So I, exactly. I, don't know what were, what are the special, you know, like I pretty much know what in the B ed you will be learning, but in SNED mom, what are the, you know, like what are the, uh, what do they learn there? Okay, um, for the pre-service teachers, they will learn how to handle students with um, um, difficulties. So they can work closely with, um, especially at this time that we are into the inclusion. They have to belong. We, they need to belong. So um, the pre-service teachers work closely with the regular teacher, um, special needs education with um, the psychologist, the guidance counselor, and then we have um, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and speech pathologists, especially for those who have speech difficulties. And they can also go to um, developmental pediatrics and social work. So they can um, they can learn a lot of things when uh, they graduate in this program because they can work well along with other fields, their allied fields. And Above have, all, Mavira, they should be able to master individualized learning plan mm, because special yeah. education is more individualized or customized. Yeah. So they should be able to master how to write an individualized learning plan. Right. 
I remember uh, or what the, we call as IEP. Yes, personal learning plans and or IEP. I did not. I had the. Uh, I had an experience of that, but I don't know how I survived. <laughs> <laughs> not having the the training or the you know like uh, not having the special training to be able to do that effectively. So, I I believe we have a lot of graduates, sir. Uh, abroad um, teaching SPED. Correct. Yes. Uh, we have um, enrollee mom from the doctoral program that she was teaching SPED in, I think, New York or Maryland. Okay, so she, uh, she is um, enrolling at Holy Name University in our graduate program. Yes. I know I said it's a, it's a, you know, it takes a lot of skill and passion and uh, training to be able to teach in this uh, program, sir. Very grueling, very challenging, very frustrating, but rewarding. I, uh, I but, uh, but I know that, you know, like if you only have like uh, eight students and you have your, uh, so that you teach your assistant. And uh, I heard that, you know, like in some, the IEP is just to draw or cut a straight line. So yes. or something like that. So, uh, but, uh, you know, like uh, you have to have the heart and the passion. You have to be compassionate and uh, interest to handle this um, learner with difficulties yes because we that. have to respond their needs effectively so that they can become a better in our society and, and you should have many, a good amount of patience yes, patience yes. and there were many who already overcome their difficulties they already have their uh, mastered you know like uh, the tricks of the trade or you know how to handle yes um and so um, I'm happy also, sir, that you said uh, that we already have a new facility for the, uh, the center, the, the their, ice bed. Yes, the ice bed. I haven't seen it. But I, supposedly, ice bed is supposed to be hands on. You cannot just teach theories inside the classroom. Right. You should have the real feel of how it is to handle the special needs. So I, um, we need to have a laboratory and the ice bed serves as a little laboratory. Yes, I haven't visited Because they that. have a... Yeah, it is... Uh, we can find it, ma'am, in the... the uh, what is that? Elementary school canteen before? I was told. So it was I haven't been there. <laughs> so there is... Um, they have some finishing works there. Yes. So we should uh, also uh, have a publisher uh, rocket a video or something to show to showcase or to show uh, that uh, I sped the center or the facility over there. Ma'am, uh, Ma'am Joy, you were saying that uh, you were teaching in the center. Which center is this? Ours or uh, somewhere else? Yes, um, I'm putting a learning center. Um, handling students, uh, tutorial classes for students after school. And when they knew that I am studying special education, so there were parents who enrolled their students mm -hmm. because um, they already identified that they have difficulties. So um, I cater those students. But sad to say, um, that center was being closed for this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we cannot have the physical contact. Yes, I know. It's, uh, it, I, I, I don't know how the parents now or the, that education is uh, uh, catered to uh, during this uh, pandemic. But uh, uh, we are preparing. I mean, I'm happy to know that they're preparing that facility for when uh, we the face-to-face -face, uh, classes start, sir. Yes. 
Exactly. Because the national government has already issued memorandum that they will start face-to-face -face classes, although experimental yet in November. Okay. And hopefully we can, uh, we have to apply or how does that work? The mechanics are not yet clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. There might be uh, some requirements or, you know, like yes. they have to have to have to see uh, what we have uh, to offer. Okay, are there some something some more that we need to um, share with them about uh, BSNED? Uh, probably, I, I, I can also emphasize one thing, Mambir, because we added a new faculty in the College of Education who had an experience of working also in the United States. If Dr. Diniega worked in Bangkok, Thailand, Bangkok. we also have one. We also have one from the U.S. I think Miss Ordista. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she can also give additional input on how it is to handle Western learners. Yes, uh, we have uh, well, what we call you know like um, where I in my last assignment, uh, you have a class where you have uh, different uh, nationalities and then the and then the mainstream students. So it's mm -hmm. kind of hard, you know, like you have one Japanese here that doesn't know how to speak English. And so has that, um, has that, uh, uh, you know, like some kind of- Literary uh, dictionary. Yes. And then you have another one who is a mainstream, the autistic uh, student, and then another one. So it's, uh, you know, like there's a Chinese, there's different nationalities. So it's, Really um, multicultural. Yes. <laughs> so uh, you diverse. Have diverse. You have to cater diverse students. Uh, I, I forgot what we call them. Uh, you know, like uh, English E L S English uh, second E S L English as a second ESL. language uh, uh, students, and um, and you have to be you know able to teach across. Uh, different nationalities and yes. their different needs. Okay, ma'am. Uh, PL Ed is probably also close to my heart because uh, of the uh, uh, my training with teachers on uh, PVL, the, the uh, different tracks. But let's talk about that. Uh, what do we offer? What do they learn in uh, in there in this uh, program? Yes, so um, beat led or Bachelor in Technology Livelihood. So another four-year course, and we offer major in home economics. Because in beat led they have four components, um, home economics, agriculture and fishery arts, industrial arts and information and communication technology. Um, but we offer... Um, beat led major in home economics. Okay, so entrepreneurship is integrated in all areas of PLE because when they will graduate, they will become teachers, they will become entrepreneurs, businessmen. Okay, so beat led program is a teacher education program that equips learners with adequate relevant competencies in the area of technology and livelihood education. Um, teach, uh, teachers who will graduate, free service teachers who will graduate can teach from elementary to college. So this is um, BITLED aims to develop highly competent, motivated teachers in technology and livelihood education. And it shall impart the body of knowledge, skills, attitudes, values, and experiences that will provide students in grade uh, in the elementary to high school, teachers with necessary competencies essential for effective teaching, and at the same time, accredited trainers and assessors. Because um, they can be trainers and assessors, um, especially if it's required by TESDA. 
And for us teachers who are handling this um, program, we need to have also an NC certificates. As we have NC2, we have to um, take those NC certificates. So um, a professional education component in this course um, should include the um, theory in concept, and we have also practical. So pedagog uh, pedagogical content knowledge and experiential learning courses. So this provide a framework within which students can understand, rationalize and reflect the various methods, strategies, processes, and other related to the teaching profession. Okay, so uh, it's based on the Pedagogical content is based on the trainer's qualification framework from FESDA. Yes, and we have they have to ensure consistent delivery of quality training services across the country. It aims to qualify and certify prospective PLE teachers, ensure their competency in their trade qualifications, training, and assessment methodologies. So experiential learning courses are intended to provide students with practical learning experiences which they can observe, verify and reflect and actually experience different components of the teaching learning process in actual school and in the industry settings. So it gives a student the opportunity to explore um, current issues related to their field of study. And at the same time, they have to take um, thesis and practice teaching. Okay. And this, will, uh, this specialization includes industry exposure to equip the teacher with in-depth knowledge of the content and special, specified skills in the major field. So BIT-led graduates should be able to qualify. Um, they will take the teacher's licensure examination and they are qualify as trainers and assessors. And they can, once they obtain appropriate certification or we have this NC. So graduates may also proceed as a teacher or in various sectors of industry as entrepreneurs or as an employee. They can become, they have to put up their own business. Okay, so I think that would be all for um, Bachelor in um, Technology and Livelihood Education. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Roque, um, the BitLed is also a new program. Uh, so when did we start and what is the uh, background or the rationale for the offering? Was it in response to um, the K-12 or did we offer this before? It's earlier than the implementation of the K-12. That was during the time of the It uh, was offered at the same time with BizNet, almost at the oh, same time. Okay. Uh, because... Uh, I, I, I can relate to the, the immersion, the industry immersion and the NC2 uh, being involved in the preparation for the full implementation of the K-12 program. So it's really important that they do have all of that. So go through the teacher, all the requirements of thesis um, and the, the, you know, like the practice teaching, practice teaching. and then immersion NC2. Mm. So, and I believe that uh, there's a lot of need in that uh, area, sir. Uh, because of the tracks, technical vocational education in senior high school, there is a big need for teachers in that track. Most of our, most of our uh, schools, step ed schools in Bohol are really Almost offering. Most schools. TVL. TVL track. Yes, yes, ma'am. 
So um, okay, so I would like to I would like to share Manvera or my experiences as a teacher in TLE, um, especially in this time of pandemic. Face to face is not allowed, so um, it is really challenging because we I need we need to find ways, alternative ways and solutions that will help us deliver quality education um, and overcome these trials posed by this pandemic. No? So the traditional face-to-face -face in the classroom is not allowed. Then we are offering different uh, mode of modalities um, introduced to, to our school. Then we're using this um, asynchronous um classroom so it brought this comfort offered by different levels of challenge um especially teaching in skill based subjects i, I can because imagine this is a <laughs> subject so it requires the skills of the students and their knowledge that so that they can be processed um it may be a common that this is a difficult subject because teachers are really struggle in finding the nearest possible way in delivering skills, even without face-to-face. -face. So teachers are coming up with ideas like making video demo presentations for students. They can see detail by detail on how things should be done. So when it comes to actual performance, Learners are then prompted with several puzzles following the given procedures. Or for settings, they're probably different. So they have to use their localized materials. So instead of laboratory being used in the school, they're using their kitchen as their of laboratory. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, for example, in carpentry, we really have, because they need to do it, so they can use um, preparing their work in their house. So that's one concrete example of this application. So in agriculture, they can plant and grow their vegetables in the garden within their backyard. While in cookery, they can use readily available ingredients in their kitchen or whatever available in their house. So that is our alternative um, way. So it is also applicable in other areas of specialization in other skill-based um, subjects. So I'm not be giving I'm not giving INC to, to the TLE students because it's already a, a challenge for them. So as teacher we really have to find a way or ways that we can deliver still our lesson to our students. Um, it may seem difficult, but with passion and dedication, we will be able to surpass these ordeals um, brought by the pandemic. So for um, so for TLE, TL, DIT led, ma'am, uh, the major subjects would be. Uh, the ones you mentioned, cookery, um, they have to go all, through all that. Um, yes, yeah. Cookery, they have what else? Cookery, agriculture, baking, um, baking. We food. have food and food prepa uh, principles of food, food preparation. We have clothing construction or the sewing. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Okay. So, and uh, so those are the major subjects. Carpentry, you said carpentry is also included. Yes, ma'am. They have. Okay. So, uh, so they have also um, automotive. They have also um, electrical, electronics. So mm. they're exposed to this um, skill based um, things. So they will be using a, their house or go to the nearby. Um, shops practice so to, to learn and practice. Yes. 
I can I can imagine. And then they have to, but the NC2 is not a requirement for graduation, is it? Or it's not. Okay. It's but, not a requirement for graduation. But they for, for but them they to have be hired. To, once they will be hired or um apply. usually ma'am the students who are enrolled in in college they have already the NC certificate because in the senior high yes. they have um they have to accomplish, yes, accomplish yes. the certificates they have their own certificates which brings me to uh the ones who will be uh the senior high school graduates who are uh planning to enroll in BitLed were ideally from the TVL track or or from any getting an NC is an advantage so to graduates of the senior high school in the TVL program is a good material mm -hmm. uh, we lost your uh, video mom Joyce um, I I hope that you're able to come back there okay you're back so I'm back. <laughs> thank you. So um, I can. Uh, there's so many fields, no. Uh, but before we close, um, uh, I forgot to ask uh, the idea. What is? Uh, give me an idea of how many are in our SNED, BSNED, and how many are enrolled in our uh, BITO led. Are we increasing yes, in numbers or yes? Um, for the SNED, we have only thirty-two. From first year to fourth year, okay, thirty-two, and for our beat led is forty-two. Okay, thank you very much for that. But there's so many, there's really a uh, you know like a, a need for these teachers. Sir, do we have any announcements or scholarships? available for these programs or are there upcoming activities that you like us to announce here or probably they will wait uh, as far as scholarship is concerned will we maintain our resident scholarship if you can maintain a grade of 1.2 or up you can enjoy 100 percent tuition fee discount if they also have they are also top uh top one of the graduating senior high school. Uh, sure. They also have uh, the entrance and then the resident scholarships. And yes. they have so many scholarships available anyway. So all they need to do is um, what? Email uh, scholarships at hnu.edu.ph. To reach you, uh, Soroke, your email is uh, or coed and yours mom joy should they have any questions on these three programs yours okay being... so they can reach through my mail so jdeniega at hnu.edu.ph and program head to at hnu.ph okay thank or you they can call directly to the office yes. with a telephone number um 501-7731 and local 216 and i think you also have a mobile number the only um, yes we have yeah we have a mobile number in the co um, 0963-900-641 and our um office secretary will take their call okay can you say that again zero nine zero nine six three nine zero zero six four one okay so i'm looking at that time uh -huh. we're beyond uh an hour wow it's a good afternoon conversation with the both of you thank you very much for uh sharing and being so gracious um, we would like, I would now like to ask you for your closing statements. Uh, I'll start with uh, Mom Joyce and then I'll, I'll we'll close with Sir Roque. Okay. 
So in my part, it's my belief that all students to have high aspirations, they must believe in themselves, be actively engaged in their learning, and see the connection between what they learn today and how they want to become tomorrow. Wow, very well said. Uh, Soroke? Uh, I'd like to invite uh, prospective applicants to, be, to join us in the College of Education because in HNU, we just don't train you how to teach the community. We also train you how to serve the community and that is our commitment to the public. We develop persons not just only of skills, but of art that know how to serve the community. Wow, thank you very much. And so we come to a uh, close and I'll uh, say this has been Vera Villusido, the marketing and advertising officer. Uh, continue to follow us on Facebook, Holy Name University Official. On Twitter, HNU Bohol. On Instagram, it's Holy Name University. This broadcast will be in our HNU Holy Name University YouTube channel, uh, our official Facebook page, and links will be provided in our Twitter uh, account, also Holy Name University. Thank you very much for joining us, for watching, and have a pleasant afternoon day and weekend thank you very Goodbye, much everyone thank, thank you, you Manvera. And we all thank you for sing. the invitation Manvera. and we all sing in hnu we help you in real, real life. life i sing dreams, dreams.